Okay, so today's gonna be a really fun one. Today we have someone who you are probably gonna know from a bunch of different projects, some of your favorite Disney shows, Good Luck Charlie, Mighty Med, Lab Rats, Elite Force. He's a recent USC grad, but most importantly, he was the star of an ad for Evergreen Investments. Please welcome Bradley Stephen Perry. Man, you've done your research. <laughs> yeah, man. First job, right? That is the first thing. Well, technically, that yeah, that's the first paid job I ever did in my life when I was five years old. Impressive, yeah. man. So yeah. if I gave you a second to introduce yourself now, what, what would you say is Bradley Stephen Perry? Yeah, man, he, he works for Evergreen Investments. Um, yeah, okay, well... So yeah, I'm, I'm Bradley Perry. I started uh, Bradley Stephen Perry. We, per this platform, I, I have to be Bradley Perry. But uh, yeah, people know me as Bradley Stephen Perry. Um, I started working when I was five years old. I grew up in Los Angeles, so it kind of made that process a lot easier. Um, it, acting was like my after school activity. It was like you know playing a sport for most kids. And so I just was driving down to LA with my mom, doing these auditions. Uh, for, for five years before I got a real solid job, I booked Good Luck Charlie when I was like 10 years old. Um, Good Luck Charlie ran for four years, 100 episodes. That spun me into a different show. That spun me into a different show. Um, and then on the last show I did for Disney Channel, I became the uh, second youngest director in television history, which was pretty cool. Um, I don't know if that still holds up. I'd have to look into that. But I'm going to, at the time I was, so I'm going to keep that. Um, and then, yeah, I went to, uh, I went to USC to study film, um, got my degree in film production. And then uh, here we are a couple years later, got a podcast, got a cooking show. And unfor I got to explain the mustache. I wouldn't usually walk around with this thing. I, I'm, I'm doing a shoot for somebody uh, in a couple weeks and they were like, please have some facial hair. So I had to keep this and it's, it's funny you had, is, is your girlfriend a fan of the mustache uh, well actually currently i'm single so it's nice you know i can walk around and like just do whatever i want you know like I, I i the facial hair is fine generally women are not a fan of a mustache i've found this is what i've actually found is that they're a fan of it when they meet you at like a bar or something right where it's like walking around it's like oh that's cute but then it's when when you start to see them every single day and they're like, all right, get rid of the damn mustache. It's, um, it's getting gross. Oh, yeah, man. Like a, a mustache is the equivalent of being huge at the gym, right? Like the bros yeah. love it. Your friends yeah. think it's sick. But then girls are like, uh, I don't know about that. Yeah, so. I know. Exactly. Yeah. And that's what every guy is like, dude, I, I, I want to be huge. I want to be jacked. And girls are like, oh, I don't, I don't want that. But yeah. All right, dude. All right. So, sorry, go ahead. Uh, that's my life. That's it. 25 years. We just caught you up. Uh, we're all up to speed now. 25 years caught up, man. Well, you've had a much, I'm about the same age as you. I'm 25 as well. And I think you've had a much more eventful 25 years than me. I've lived oh. in my whole life. Uh, it's been pretty simple, but uh, it's great to have you here, man. So let's yeah, get started. Up. Get to know you a bit with a few rapid fire questions. So first off, what was your favorite TV show growing up? Oh, like favorite TV show I watched. Um, Man, that's tough because I was a weird kid. When people were like watching YouTube, I was watching Game of Thrones. And so I think I started watching Game of Thrones in their second season and I was 12. So I think that's the greatest television show ever made. But as far as comedy goes, I would say growing up Friends was like my, favorite, my family's favorite show. So we watched a lot of Friends and then my dad and I watched Game of Thrones. You know, the Game of Thrones comment is kind of funny because I found people who are on traditionally like, you know, kids or family shows or bands like, you know, One Direction who put out traditionally younger person music, they tend to like, you know, harder rock or more serious shows and not sure. so much the thing that they've actually produced, which I've always found kind of interesting. You know, what was funny for me, though, was as soon as I got on Disney, I stopped watching Disney. I used to watch Disney like religiously. Like I was such a big fan. Like Wizards of Waverly Place was my favorite show as a kid. Okay. Uh, I was a big fan of Corey in the house. So I loved Jason. Um, now that I know him, I don't like him. But, you know, it was like I loved Sweet Life on Deck and Sweet Life of Zach and Cody. But then it was like I, I became friends with these people, you know, so it was less exciting, you know. And so it was like. I, I was working on the shows too, so 
I didn't go and watch them. I never watched. I, I didn't watch Good Luck Charlie really until. I'm not even kidding you. I was in my junior year of college and it was about 3 a.m. and I was bored. And I had gone out that night. So I was sitting in my apartment bored and I was like, yeah, let's see what all the hype's about. And so I sat down and watched it and I was like, oh, this is a pretty funny show. <laughs> so it's pretty good. It's but, funny yeah. that you mentioned that, man. Because like I, I was actually talking to my brother about this as well, is that as we you know grow closer to the people we looked up to, like, you know how you said you watched Jason on Corey in the house and loved him. And then, you know, now he's friends. So it's normal. I yeah. feel like mementos, like, you know, an autograph or a photo with someone starts to get replaced by moments with them. So instead yeah. of like that cool thing, it's like, oh yeah, you know, I had Jason over for dinner and it was a good time just because we're buds. And I think that's, that's pretty cool. And, you know, once you got on Disney channel, you reach that stage of your life. Yeah. I think it's also like, if you can, if, if it's kind of a double-edged sword, right? Because it's like you, you want to be able to pass that like, oh my God, this person's this thing that I looked up to and it's cool. You want to get to the point where you're just friends with them, right? But I think sometimes if you can take a step back and go, hey, that's pretty cool that I get to be friends with these people, you know? And I look at it with like all my friends that I have today, a lot of people would be like, oh my God, it's it's that person, you know? And like, they're just a friend to me, you know, it's like a good friend of mine. And I, I think if you can take a step back and go, wow, it's pretty cool that I get to be friends with these people or that these people are in my life in general. I think that that's, that's pretty important, you know? Well, I, I couldn't agree more. And I think normalcy was almost built into your life from the beginning, right? Like you said, you, your mom would drive you to your auditions and she and Jason's mom would hang out at Good Luck Charlie with you guys. You, you just seem to grow up a normal kid. Yeah. Three normal sisters. And I think that probably played a large role in keeping you grounded. Would that be fair to say? Oh, dude, I 100%. And I, I honestly, I, I have thought about it so many times of how different my life would be if I even lived an hour further north. Because my, you know, the, the drive to Los Angeles from where I grew up was, well, now it today's day and age with the amount of traffic that we have because too many people live here. Uh, at the time, it was like, you know, an hour, 45 minutes to get from where I grew up into the city. And so it was very doable. And my mom was a stay-at-home mom because we had uh, I have three other sisters. So, you know, at that point, my sisters were in high school. It was very doable for us to go, you know, to, to LA every day. And then I just, honestly, I mean, I got lucky, right? It's like everybody tries and then I was just happened to get the the big one. And so it worked out really well for me. But I think having my sisters who were just doing their thing in high school and being normal and my dad who I think, you know, it's tough is a lot of people move out here and they have to restart their family because their kid, their kid wants to be an actor and they have to restart everything. So that the parents are out here and oftentimes like the kids have to pay for living, you know, I think for me, my dad already had his career, you know, it was like, it was his life. And I just happened to also get a career, you know, it wasn't like a, oh, we need to live off of you to be here, which is such a tough situation. But in it's fair when somebody moves across the country and they're like, well, if you want to do this, like I, we can't afford to be here. It's like, I was very lucky that my dad's life was already in Ventura County where I grew up, you know, so it, it worked out for, for me. Um, but yeah, I think having all that kept me pretty sane, you know? So yeah, and I'm sure that took a lot of the pressure off as well, right? Because you didn't yeah. have to sustain a family. You know, your dad had a job, your mom was there supporting you and you could just have a good time. I never even had to, I it never was a thought to me like those. I mean, again, I was also like 12, but it was, everything was so easy and simple that like it was never, it was like never a problem. It's, it's funny. Cause it's, you know, oftentimes you want to hear a, a, a story of like, uh, well, you know, we moved out here and we did it. And, and I, I was able to pay for my parents' house and, and buy them a car. I'm like, I don't know, man, it just worked out for me. I don't, I don't really have a good story for it. I'm just, I worked a lot and I was fortunate enough that my mom was able to do that with me and not need payment, you know? And so I have the life that I have now and I'm, I'm very lucky to be able to say that, you know, there's a lot of people can't. So, I mean, it's a commendable story, dude, right? Like you, you've 
done Hollywood and stayed a seemingly, you know, very normal life, very normal family and done really well for yourself. You know, you went to college. So I think all the pieces put together, you know, living close by doing it because you wanted to having a supportive family helped you stay the way that you are today. So yeah. I mean, kudos to the whole family, the whole yeah. Stephen Perry clan. <laughs> um, I'm just kidding. But uh, bro, so let's let's get through a few more rapid fire questions. So what is your favorite ice cream flavor? Because I know you eat really well. I'm yeah. a super healthy eater as well. But what's your guilty pleasure ice cream? Well, my guilty pleasure is ice cream. First off, that's like I if it's in my freezer, it's going away. Um, that's why I don't buy it. But, uh, I, it's a combination of two. My favorite thing is mint chocolate chip and Rocky road together. I don't know why, but that combination in like a, like a milkshake is so good. And I can often switch out the Rocky road for chocolate peanut butter. Those two things, but mint chocolate chip, I don't know why I can devour it. Dude. I, so two comments. One, I love mint anything. My friends tell me it tastes like toothpaste, but I have mint, I actually have mint tea with me right now. Love yeah, it. Yeah. Second thing. So the combination of like the marshmallow with like the mint. So I was actually going out with this girl a couple months ago, went on a date. I mixed mint tea with like a marshmallow flavored coffee. She's like, that's the grossest concoction I've ever seen. And I loved it. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was the Rocky good. Road mint. It was for the streets after that, bro. There you He's go. There. You got to <laughs> you gotta find somebody who appreciates your team <laughs> combination. <laughs> oh, that's funny, man. Uh, okay, what was your favorite episode of Good Luck Charlie to shoot? Oh, man. I don't, to be honest with you, I don't remember half of them. But <laughs> it was so long ago. I always loved working with Jason a lot. Our storylines were really fun. That's always kind of been like my automatic answer just because like, we, we did a lot of episodes where it was PJ and Gabe running around doing stupid stuff. And it was always really fun. And it worked out well for us because we would play a lot of Xbox in Jason's dressing room. So if we were in the same scenes, that means we weren't in the same scenes. So if like they were filming something else, we could go play Xbox. And so that anytime we got to be together, those were usually my favorite episodes. That's sick. Yeah, I had a feeling you weren't gonna say the like vacation one because I, I heard you, uh, you and Eric had to stay home and everyone else went, right? Oh my god, yeah, dude. When we did the movie, and we were all in Utah, and I mean, the movie was like the storyline was mostly Bridget and Lee, and they were like trying to get back to the to the family. Uh, so Eric and I spent a lot of time together in Utah, just like prancing around Utah. And doing nothing for a long time. But yeah, I mean, it was still a lot of fun. It was fun to be in Utah and, and work when we did. But yeah, we, we, we didn't do much in that movie. <laughs> All right, dude, last rapid fire question. I know you're a country fan. I'm a huge country fan too. So pick out your number one Morgan Wallen song and your number one Luke Combs. Oh, God. Don't do this to me. It's all about like what I feel in the moment, you know, but I will say, uh, uh, you know, the most generic answer for Morgan Wallen is anytime Chase and you comes on, it's like, it's still the best song he's ever written. You know, um, I was loving 98 Braves for a minute there by Morgan Wallen. And then again, with like Luke Combs, it's the same thing. I think of like the first Luke Combs song I listened to was uh, she got the best of me, you know? And so that was like what I fell in love with. And every once in a while when that thing comes on, it's like, it, it's weird how music takes you back to like a certain moment in your life. And every time I hear that song, I, I've never admitted this to anybody in my life. So congrats. That takes me back to driving to a uh, statistics final. My, my sophomore year of college, and I was just sobbing because I was not prepared for it at all. And that song was on. And I was just like, I'm going to fail this final too. <laughs> and I was just sitting in the car like, I don't know what to do. I ended up passing it. I was totally fine. And I think I finished like a B in the class. But I just like, it just takes me back to just like that moment. And it was so bad. That's what I think of Luke Combs is what I think of. <laughs> Dude, that that's magical, man. Let me turn you on to two songs then. Talk in Tennessee by Morgan oh, Wallen. Oh, Unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, especially like the lead up to the second chorus. I yeah, don't know, yeah. man. That's magical. And then so Luke good. Combs, even though I'm leaving, <laughs> is I think one of the best songs ever written. Dude, if I want to sit there and cry about my dad, yeah, that's where I'm gonna 
I'm going to sit Beautiful. there and listen to that song. That song breaks me down every time. All right, dude. Let's talk a little bit about growing up. So, I mean, you've talked about growing up in other podcasts. So, I don't want to go too deep into like, you know, the family life and the commercial and whatever. The, the one question I had for you is when did you start to feel like you've really made it? Ah, uh, man. To be honest with you, I don't feel like I ever did or ever have. And I think if at the time where I was maybe could have actually said, Hey, I'm, I'm doing some pretty cool stuff. I didn't understand it or appreciate it at the time. And I think where I'm at now in my life, I look back on the time, especially on like, you know, when I was working for Disney and I was on good luck, Charlie, and, you know, we were going to the Emmys and, and like something like that is a pretty cool thing for a lot of people. But I don't feel like for me, I, I haven't done nearly any of the things that I really want to do in my life. And I feel like maybe when I can sit back and go, okay, work is coming to me consistently. I get to do the things that I want to do. I have a family and I'm living the life I want. That's kind of like when I feel like I, I've made it, I guess. I think it's all relative for everybody because, you know, maybe you could say like at this point, I've done a lot of things in my career to say that, but it just doesn't feel that way, you know? And I think, I think most actors would probably give you the same answer of when, when you are working consistently, that's when you feel like you made it because I, I, you know, at any point acting can go away and people can stop caring about you and just not want to work with you anymore. And I think because of that, I don't, I don't know. I, I certainly don't feel like I've, I've made it by any means, you know? You've given me such an interesting answer. Like you said, most actors would say when you have consistent, like that, I, I watched a podcast yesterday of you, you and Eric talking. He's like, yeah, if you have a job, don't complain. You made it. Yep. That's a fair answer. And most actors would give that, but I think it's a testament to how you grew up that you're saying to me, you haven't made it until you have a good family life. You know, you have the kids, you're set up because yeah. that's what your parents provided to you. You know, your idea of success isn't necessarily attached to work, but it's more so attached to family life, happiness. And I think yeah. specifically in LA and in the entertainment industry, that's a hard perspective to attain. You know, dude, I think that like, for me, I have, I have always been the weird one where at like 15, I was like, I'm so excited to get married and have kids. Like I've always just always thought that, you know, like that was always the thing that I wanted. And I think I've thought about it a lot, but for me, it's like all these things that I want to do in the film industry, I can't imagine would be as fulfilling if you did it alone, you know? And I think if you had somebody to share all those moments with and share the success with it makes it so much better like i think every guy deep down just wants to it's just in our being to like provide for people and provide financially for kids and stuff like that and so i think that's all i really think about is like setting myself up consistently to where when the time comes and i'm ready to do that you know i'm i'm, I'm in the spot to be able to do it you know um so yeah, I mean, I that's it's funny, but that's always how I've I've thought when it came to like working in the film industry. Is it's like, it, it, and and honestly, dude, if like if I'm, if I'm being candid, it's like there's times in this job where you, where you sit there and go, okay, is this the right thing to do? If like if that's what you want, you know, because it's very, it all comes in waves, and it's like in those down times, you're sitting there going, well, I I can't have a family this way. You know, I can't provide for people when I'm going, when's my next paycheck coming in? When am I doing the next thing? It's like, if you want to have a, a wife and kids, you got to know you guys are good. You know, you guys are good to live your life. I can't be on dad to figure it out, you know? So I don't know. It, it's, it's such a weird business. Uh, it's unfortunately the only thing I really love, <laughs> you know? So, so I got to stick with it, but yeah, I don't know. We'll figure it out. <laughs> I mean, you you built an incredible platform of yourself. Like I know you say you're you're a jack of all trades, master of none, but what I do think you're a master of is building a presence, a platform, right? Because, you know, even though it's not still acting in TV shows or movies, now you have your cooking show, which we'll talk more about. You have 
uh, your interview series with Jake, right? You built such a strong platform that has staying power. And I know you don't want to be an influencer. I get that. But I think just having that presence will help you, you know, land more roles, land more stability in the future as well. So you like built a really good platform. Yeah. I mean, that's, I think that's for Jake and I, that's kind of why, obviously we love doing the podcast and we love talking to people and we have fun doing it. But at the end of the day too, you know, it's, it's, it is still being on camera and it's working that muscle and it's keeping yourself relevant in the industry and like being present and, you know, as long as people know you, you have a better chance of working. Right. And so, you know, for, for us, like we, we love doing it, but it's also beneficial for our careers for sure. Um, and it's even like, if it's not like incredibly financially beneficial, it's like, okay, well, it's an investment in our life and it's an investment in our time and like furthering ourselves in this business on what we actually want to do. I think the problem, and let me clarify, I don't have a problem with influencers. I am not an influencer because I have the following that I have from a TV show that I did. You know, it's not like I, it's not like I built it up. And it's, if anything, it's me saying, well, I'm, I didn't do those things. So I can't be qualified as that. It's like, I worked as an actor for a long time. So that's how people knew me. And that's why they follow me. So it's disingenuous of me to be like, doing things that an influencer would do because it's like, well, I had a base already, you know, whereas these people are building up their career as a person. So that's my take. I think it's fair. And I also like to distinguish between influencer and creator. So I don't know if you've seen my page or not, but I've always called myself a creator because, um, you know, I started this six or seven months ago and my dad, he hates social media, like with a passion. Uh, and then in the car one day, he's driving me home and he's like, hey, Dan, you should start an Instagram. And I was just like, what? Uh, if my dad says I should, I should. And the reason I did it was because it's a creative outlet to me. It's where I put all of the ideas that I know if I sent to my friends or family, they would get so sick of me. Yeah. So I like to distinguish between people who are trying to influence behavior and people who need a creative outlet. And I think what you've done well is you've erred on the creator side more so than the influencer side as you've grown. Yeah, dude, I, I've realized in the last few months, I had this long talk with a buddy of mine where we were just kind of saying, I like, I think if you're a creative person and you have that in you and you don't get to express it, it just causes like mayhem in your brain. You know, like if, if you don't have a way, like therapy to me, is sitting down and even doing something like this where we can talk and we can have a creative conversation. But like going and doing the podcast, doing the cooking show, I sleep so much better at night doing those things than if I go, you know, play golf all day, which I love, don't get me wrong. But, you know, it's like, it's not creative. You got, if you have like that energy in you, you have to get it out. It's almost like a form of ADHD. You're like, I got to do something, you know? Yeah. And so I think that, I've had to find ways to keep myself sane to, by letting that energy out of me, you know? I think that's a perfect way to put it, right? It's energy that has to get out and you found so many different outlets. So I'm, I'm yeah. impressed by that. Thank you. So one more question about childhood before we move on to, to other things. Um, so you've been known to say that the one thing you don't get about kids in high school is how they would go to the mall just to hang out in the mall and not buy anything, not do anything. So my question for you is, are there any other things that high school kids do that you feel you missed out on and you're like, oh, that's kind of dumb? Or are there things that you missed out on and you kind of wish you did experience? Yeah, the mall thing is stupid. I don't, I never understood that. But there's so many other things to do in life. Why would you walk around and just look at things? And also as an adult now, when I go to the mall and – I see high school students just walking around. I don't know why I'm so terrified of them. I don't understand like why like teenagers really scare me. And I'm walking around the mall and I'm like, I'm just trying to shop, but they're just here. I don't know. Anyway, um, to answer your question, things that I maybe missed out on. I guess like, I don't know. I, I played baseball growing up until I was about 16. And I have a good group of friends from that who went on to play high school and college baseball. 
and I still see them all the time. And I think that I hear like about the camaraderie of like being on a baseball team and like traveling with buddies and, and doing these things. And like, that is something that I wish I would have been able to do. But I always have to come back to the fact that like, I would, I mean, you can, in any point in your life, you could say that this person, I wish I would have been able to do that or wish I would have been able to do that. But I know for a fact, and I have to remind myself of it, that anybody in high school would have switched career paths with me. And so I don't want to look at things that other people got to do and be like, oh, I wish I would have been able to do that because I got to do awesome things and I don't regret any second of working in television. You know, I got to travel with the people that I worked with. So I, I was able to do that. I was able to go to the mall and, and buy things instead of just walking around. <laughs> So. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the key difference, man. You worked instead of going to school, so you had money to buy things. That's why they <laughs> buy stuff. And I, but yeah, that's when I was like 17, dude, I didn't even know what to buy, so I was just buying some clothes. And I don't even like buying clothes. I don't think I spent money until I was like 20 years old and living on my own. And I was like, oh, what do you mean I have to do this? <laughs> I don't want to do this. Well, and that's funny. Yeah, you grow up so fast, right? In acting, yeah. you have to do things so early, and then you have like money, and you're like, "What do I? What do I do with this?" I know. Well, and like you know, you have to do all these things with you got have your management and people doing this and managing all the things, and so I actually grew up not really understanding money, you know, because it was just like I didn't really have to deal with anything, and then I became an adult and I lived on my own, and I was like what do you mean? <laughs> like none of this makes any sense, you know? Um, but other things that people did in high school that make no sense to me, I will still not be able to understand how to open a locker. That co combination thing does not make sense to me. People have tried to explain it to me. I think it's weird. There's got to be a better system than turning this thing in six different directions. I don't understand it. Um, yeah, I think that's it. So there you go. Bradley Stephen Perry played a doctor on TV, but he can't work no, a locker. Can, yeah. No, can't open yeah. a locker. <laughs> I love it, man. So that, that's the perfect segue. So let's talk a bit about Good Luck Charlie now. So this is a crazy success. I remember you were saying growing up, you know, like Ben Stiller watched it, Adam Sandler, <laughs> um, uh, Steve Carell tweeted about it. And fun fact, Good Luck Charlie was one of the only shows that my parents would actually watch with me growing up because they liked it too. Yeah. And the other one was actually Wizards. So like you said, you know, growing yeah. up. But, um, yeah. So like, what was the process of casting for Good Luck Charlie? Oh, man. So I went on an audition and this was back in the day when actors, you should actually have to go into audition. Um, that's another topic. But, um, you know, so I went in on this audition, thought I did fine. It went back to my normal life, was in third grade just going to class third fourth grade going to class and um yeah months go by i just assumed i didn't get it and i wasn't technically right for that role as far as like visuals go as far as the character goes it was like spot on to what i was as a kid and who i am to this day like i genuinely believe if that character grew up he would be what i am right now and just personality wise, same person. So it, it made sense on paper, but then when you started to get into like the other people who were in the show and the people that they already had attached, it didn't make sense to cast me because I didn't look like them at all. So, you know, months go by and I think I had a friend who went out for it and they're like, Hey, I think they're doing like callbacks or whatever. And my mom calls up my manager and was like, whatever happened to this one like i thought he was really good for it and so the manager calls over to cassie and they're like actually you know yeah we're, we wanted to see him again so i go through like another like another callback and then it all it went from like audition three months go by to callback and then callback and then like the next day was like a testing and the next day was another thing and it was like it all just happened really quick and then the next thing i know i'm like testing against these two other kids and we're mixing and matching with the family. Found out I booked it the next morning and went and did a table read that day. 
which was which was very bizarre. But I went to school in the morning, and I'll never forget this. This was like a, a core memory for me. Is my mom was like, "Look, they're gonna call around eleven, and if I if you get a phone call while you're in class to go to the office, like, no, you booked it. But if you don't, it's okay." And it's just, we'll just move on. So I basically went into the school day going, if I leave in the middle of the day, I, I booked the show. If not, then I'm just here. And I, I remember it was almost like 11 o'clock on the dot that the teacher got a phone call and it was like, Bradley, go to the office. And I like sprinted to my mom and I was so excited, dude. Um, but yeah, we drove straight to uh, the table read and then... Yeah, man, my life changed forever, I guess. But kind of a funny story with that. When I was working on Lab Rats, the casting director came up to me and was like, hey, just so you know, you owe me for your entire career. And I was like, why? And she goes, because we, we were casting on the show Sonny with a Chance. And I got really close to booking the younger brother on Sonny with a Chance. They ended up getting rid of that character, but it was between me and like a couple other people. And that casting director was like, when we were helping on Good Luck Charlie, I remembered you from Sunny with a Chance. And I went to Drew and Phil, the creators of Good Luck Charlie, and they're like, hey, I think you really should give this kid another chance. I think he's really good. And they're like, all right, we'll, we'll check it out again. And then they ended up really liking it. And I, I've always like thought I'm super lucky because I don't look like that family at all. So it's a big risk to just cast one brunette in a family of blondes. So I like to believe that maybe I was just good enough where they were like, ah, whatever, we'll screw genetics. You know, like it doesn't make sense at all. But yeah, I, I, I was pretty lucky in that casting process. It was, a, it was a long process, but. Yeah, I was just about to say, it looks like, you know, Eric, like Lee, um, Jason and Bridget, and even Mia could literally all be siblings. Yeah. <laughs> and then there was you. So that's pretty fun. But uh, you know, man, we what all- a story. Yeah, we always like, we did it like a bit of, you know, could it be possible? Like two blondes can make a brunette. That's possible. Oh, yeah. And also Lee is technically brunette. She just dyes her hair. Or she was like, I think she has like more like red hair. So we were like, all right, maybe we can justify that. The thing that doesn't work is, I'm sure you know, two blue eyes can't make a brown eye. So they're both blue eyed. I'm brown eyed. And that was the only thing. And it was, it was a big topic for like fans online. It's like, it's impossible. Two blue eyes can't make a brown. And so. Dude, just to prove it, because I did med school, right? Like genetics is one of the courses we have to do. I'm going to put up like, do you remember learning Punnett squares? Oh, in yeah. high school? Oh, we yeah, did them. Yeah. Those up on the screen when I do this in post, just to prove <laughs> that you're right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I love that, man. Um, and so good luck, Charlie. You know, you lucked out, man. Like yeah. Sunny with the Chance seemed like a great family as well, but you have some of the, best people I think I've ever seen. Everyone seems genuine, close, caring, still connected to this day. So do you have any like core special memories with them, whether it's way back when you were shooting or closer to, to present? Oh man, you know, those people will just always have such a special place in my heart, you know, because it was like, for me, I think for like, and I talk about this with Eric all the time, uh, I literally was playing pool with Eric last night, but you know, it, it, for him, he's been acting for 40 years, you know, and that time of good luck, Charlie was just this four year window in there, but it wasn't even like the biggest thing he did or like the biggest like project, like, you know, it was just a little window for him, which he loved. And it was this amazing time, obviously. But for me, it was the start of everything for me. You know, it was like, it was the beginning of my, my life. And I was also in puberty. So I'm growing up with these people, you know, and like, I'm I'm going through like these bizarre years of your life with this family. And they really were just such a family to me, you know? So it's like, for me, I, I will always think of that show in such a fond way, you know? And so I don't know, dude, I, I, it's all just a great memory at this point. And it's all like such a, a beautiful thing. And the fact that we all get to still see each other and everybody's kind of gone off and done their own things in, in different places. It's awesome. You know, it's, it's really cool to see. It's gotta be so nice for the fans of the show as well to see that you guys are as close off the yeah. show as you were on. So 
that's incredible, man. Yeah, and also, um, like, you know, I, th- I think for all of us, like, nobody has a bad thing to say about anything that we did, you know? Nobody has a bad thing. It's I feel like it's kind of like a theme recently to, like, complain about like w- like working on tv or something like having something that was bad i think it's like for us it's like dude we loved every minute of it and we would go we would all go back and do it all again and we didn't really know that the show was as successful i guess as it was like we didn't i, I we didn't ever like feel like wow, we're getting this many views a week on the show. We just kind of went to work and did it. They they never made it feel like we were doing really well, which was funny because we were like doing really well. And I look back on it on the time and I'm like, oh, TV shows didn't often do that, you know? So it's kind of funny to think, but at the time we were just going into work and filming the show and moving on. That's so, I, I honestly, man, I, I love that. And that's very, very cool to hear. So let's fast forward now, you know, after Good <laughs> Chuck, Charlie, you went and you did Mighty Med. And then after Mighty Med, you went on to Lab Rats Elite Force. And then you had to make the decision that every 18 year old kid has okay. to make. Do I go to university yeah. or do I become a sports broadcaster? <laughs> yeah, yeah. How did you make that? Yeah. Yeah. Um... Isn't it funny that like acting wasn't a part of that decision? It was just two other choices. <laughs> Dude, so, you know, I, I, when I finished Good Luck Charlie and went on to Mighty Med, there was like a, a brief conversation between my mom and I of like, okay, do you want to go do another show or do you want to go to high school? And it was like a brief conversation. And the fact that I look back on it and go, the fact that I even had that conversation is so dumb. Like, of course, you go do a TV show, idiot. Like, it shouldn't even be a conversation. So, you know, I obviously, I go on to do Mighty Med. And then Lab Rats ended at the perfect time for me to where, like, I could kind of start slow in community college and going, like, all right, is this what I wanted to do? And it, it was. It was the right thing for me to do because I hadn't been in a classroom. When I went to class my freshman year of college, was the first time I had been in a classroom since fourth grade. And so I didn't even know what to do. I didn't know what to bring. I didn't know how to act. I didn't know what, like I sat in the back corner because I was terrified. You know, it was like none of it felt normal. And it was the most normal thing I've ever done, but it was, none of it felt normal to me. And so- No one gave you a script. (laughs) I didn't know what to do. And the other thing of it was the first class I took was like an intro to cinema class. So I'm just sitting there learning about film and I'm like, this should be the most easy thing ever. But, you know, and I kind of realized at the time I was like, okay, I actually really love this life and I love doing this thing and I get really excited to go to class. And I was like, all right, I want to commit to a little little more. So I, I transferred and went to USC and like, lived there and did the whole deal and met, you know, the most amazing people and, and joined the fraternity and, and, and met my brothers, you know, and it just was like, it was, it was the perfect thing for me. Um, Cause I think, you know, college is only there for four years, really. Like, I mean, you can get your education, but like the time of, of living there and being that same age as everybody else there's only a four year window where you can do that. Yeah. And I, I kind of made the decision that like acting can be here for the rest of my life and that life can be here for the rest of my life. But man, if I didn't do it, I probably would have regretted it every single day. And I've, I've weirdly been talking about this a lot because I see a lot of people who I grew up with and we shared success doing things. And a lot of people continued acting and doing all that. And I'm like, man, I, I think I would be so sad if I didn't have those memories that I made, like going to college and, and doing the, you know, quick little trips with your buddies where you're sleeping on a couch and it's very normal. Whereas like when you're working on TV, it's like, okay, we're flying you out here and you're going to stay. And it's like, sometimes it's just those little quick, stupid trips were so much, so meaningful to me, you know? And so Totally. I think that like for me, I, I made that choice and it was, I, I think the best choice I've ever made in my life. Um, you know, and I think coming out of college, you kind of have to do a little restart process of like who you are and what you want to be. 
and that's for everybody. But yeah, I think I did that. The sports broadcasting thing, man, you don't understand. I watch every sport and my, and my dad and I are like religious about it. And I'm such a big sports fan. Any sport, I'll have a conversation with you about it for hours. But I sit there and while my dad and I are watching football games, I swear on my life, I say verbatim what the commentators will say, but like two seconds before. And my dad will always look at me and he was like, you should have been a sports broadcaster. You know, you should have done this. And I'm like, I know, I really, it's like, it's something that eats away at me because I'm like, I think I would be good at it. But I don't know if I would in, like enjoy it that much, you know, because I think I would get sick of it. But like if you look at somebody like Joe Buck who gets to do every sport, you know, he's calling this, he's calling that. Like that would be so fun, you know, to be at the Super Bowl and then also be at the World Series and then be at the Stanley Cup. play. Like all, all of it would be awesome. Dude, you remind me so much of my brother. He is the one <laughs> – I refuse to watch a game without him. Because he says what the commentators say, again, two seconds yeah. before they say it, he gets so amped to watch any game and it infinitely makes it more fun. You sound just like him. Uh, <laughs> and I love that. Uh, bro, TSN would love to have you as a, as a guest or I guess ESPN for you guys, right? Yeah, they would love to have you as a guest. I but, know. Uh, I've, I've thought about it, dude. I really have. Have you? I, you should when, I, it. when I was in college, I actually like almost applied for jobs at ESPN. Then I was like, oh, I don't have a resume. <laughs> <laughs> you can't just apply for a normal job <laughs> but bro i think what you've said about universe or going to college is so interesting because i think a lot of the celebrities or a lot of the child actors who have grown up and gone to college have done so well for themselves like the examples that come to mind right away like you and you said uh, like darren from like never have I ever also went to uh to college and you know Miranda Cosgrove went to I think USC as well. Uh, Bridget went to to Harvard and to MIT, right? Like these are the people who have done so well for themselves yeah. uh, because they went to college. Bridget is a, a terrible example because she is like the smartest, like just does everything on like such a high and amazing level. You know, like goes does one of the most successful TV shows you can do, then goes to NBC and starts doing TV shows, and then. It was like, you know what? Ah, I want to move to Boston and I'm going to go to MIT. And then so she does that, conquers it, and then it's like, maybe I'll go to Harvard Law. So then she goes to Harvard Law. It's like, you're not a real person, dude. <laughs> you're not a real person. It's incredible. We all know this, right? Yeah, she, she's, it's, it's unbelievable what she did, yeah. right? So it's, it's incredible. I, I agree with you. So, dude, let's move on now to something really fun that I wanted to do. So for those of you who don't know, I believe that Bradley Stephen Perry is the Instagram caption king. <laughs> so... What I've done, uh, I'm going to have them up on the screen, but I couldn't screen share for Bradley. So I DM'd him on Instagram and he has the copies of uh, my favorite captions of his. So I'm going to pull them up as well. And we're going to get the stories behind them. Uh, so the first one we'll do, this one's pretty funny. Um, it's you like looking in a mirror and you're holding up like a glass and the, the caption is, this was the worst version of myself. I'd love to hear more about that. Dude, this was my <laughs> this was my junior year. Of, this was my junior or my senior year of college, and it was Halloween, and I was I was pretty drunk, and I was going out with Jake. He was coming to a party with me, and dude, I, to be honest with you, I don't even remember taking that photo. <laughs> and so I saw it the next day, and I was like, ugh, like, that is so. I just look like such a tool. And I was, so what it was, was I was going as a DJ for Halloween. So I was supposed okay. to look like a tool and I really succeeded because it's just bad. And so, yeah, I just was like, really looked at it and thought that is the worst version of myself. I was just so horrible. Love it. Okay. Let's move on to the next one. So it's you holding up your, your degree at USC uh, and the caption is, and for the last time I wasn't quote on the rowing team. Yeah. So um, if I'm sure you know that story, but the story is that there was a, a young girl whose mother was on a very successful TV show and there was a big controversy that her mother paid for the kids to go to the school. And the story was that they said that they were on the rowing team and that's how they got in on a scholarship or something. I don't know the whole story. I don't want to butcher it and I'm not going to name names. I think we all know who we're talking about here, but as a person 
who was on television who went to the same school at the same damn time. Everybody goes, oh, what, were you on the rowing team too? And I'm like, nah, dude, I went to community college and I applied. <laughs> to like I did all <laughs> the damn things I had to do. So you know, I'm like, no, I was not on the rowing team. But everybody made the joke that I paid to get into the school. I'm like, first off, I do not have the financials to do that. That is not the case. Secondly, I went to the classes. I did everything I had to do. So, yeah. I don't know, man. The timing adds up. I know. It adds up. (laughs) All right. um, So next one. So it's you wearing like a hat. um, So And then the, the caption is, what's that? A hat. Is this your Wizards of Waverly Place uh, being a fan? Is that creeping out here? Absolutely. Yeah. That is absolutely. You still remember the song from it? What's that hat? Crazy, funky, junky hat. Overslept hair slightly. Trying to look like Kira Knightley. We've been there. We've done that. We see right through your funky hat. So. Damn. A real Wizards of Waverly Place stand. <laughs> Respect for that. Uh, and then we have got... Oh, then there's just another one. I'll put this up on the screen too. It's just a comment Eric made that I found really funny. It's a picture of Bradley at the gym and then Eric comments, it's like we're twins. <laughs> I, I just love that. I thought it was so fun. Uh, but the last one that I want you to talk about, Bradley, is you holding up three cups. You got Mars written across your forehead and it says the look I give my mom and dad at 4.59 during quarantine. So what I want to know is, <laughs> you know, obviously we get we get the joke, but what was it like living at home with your parents during quarantine? Um. Let me explain the Mars on my forehead first. Sweet. That was a fraternity event. What was the... I think it was like a space-themed party. And everybody had to dress as... Or like all the pledges. I was a pledge at the time. Everybody had to dress as like something from space. It was like very weirdly specific things. And I got Mars. It was what I had to dress as. And I didn't realized this until about two hours before the party so i was like shit i gotta do something you know <laughs> so i wore all black and then i wrote mars on my forehead and that was <laughs> so that was the story behind the mars on my forehead and then yeah that was just me in my party phase being in college um yeah living at home with my parents well what happened was i was at school you know when covid hit it was like into my junior year. So I was in, in the heat of all of it and living at school. And I mean, I'm sure you were in the same thing where it was that it's a two week early, like spring break, basically. It was going to be maybe three weeks. You're going to be at home. So I went home and then obviously it just kept going and going and going and going. And by the time I even realized what was happening, the lease at my apartment that I was living at at USC ended. So my dad and I had to drive down during COVID and just totally wipe out that apartment. And then it was like summer and I was like, I'm not going to go live alone. What's the point? You know? So, you know, more time went by and at the time my sisters were pregnant. So like we were all super freaked out about COVID because, you know, a pregnant lady with COVID wouldn't, wouldn't fare too well. And so yeah, I mean, you know, that time went by. I got in pretty good shape, I'll tell you that, because I was pretty bored all day, um, living with my my parents, played a lot of video games. Sexiest version of myself, you know, <laughs> living with my parents, <laughs> playing video games all day. And then... Yeah, that's when you and Eric became twins. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. And then I, I, I ended up moving in with Jake, um, I want to say in like October... 2020 and I lived with him for probably five months then I got my own place but I just feel like no problem living with my parents it's more of like when you've already moved out it's really hard to move back in because you kind of just gain a certain freedom and like feeling and when you can't do that anymore you know it just becomes like tension you know? Yeah. I mean, the relationship changes, right? So I live in Toronto and my parents are, are out in Mississauga. And so I go home for the weekend pretty often. And what I've found is when you go home for the weekend, you're a guest. Yeah. But during COVID, it's different because you're there long term. So you become a member of the house again. And then, like yeah. you said, right, the tension. Isn't it funny how excited they are to see you on the weekends? And then you're like, 
But man, when I was here living here again after COVID, it was like, ah, God, you're doing that. You're making mess. You're doing this. You're doing that. You're like, oh, okay. Things have changed, I guess. Good in doses, right? Doses. Got to be careful. Um, Dude, so you are a self-proclaimed Kardashians stan. And my question for you is what do you find so like appealing about the show? What do you love about it? Is it relaxing? Um, or do you just find like, you know what you're going to get. So it's, it's just easy to watch before you go to bed. It's just mindless. You know, it's, it's nothing happens. Nothing happens on that show. In fact, the same things happen every single week. And I think that it's entertaining. A it's entertaining because I live down the street from where they live. Not in a similar living situation, but, you know, they, they live very close to me. So they drive around my area all the time. Uh, but all, on top of it, it's just like, it's, it's nothing. Nothing happens. There's nothing I have to follow along with. It's like, I've never felt more like an 18 year old girl in my life when I say this, but like, I can sit there, I can lay in bed and scroll on my phone while it's on. And yeah. for me, the reason I say that is because when I watch a TV show or when I watch a movie, like I really watch it. It's my favorite thing to watch, you know? And with the Kardashians, you don't have to do that. You can look up every 10 minutes and be like, oh, yeah, this is still going on. And it, nothing changes, you know? So, yeah, I am self-proclaimed at this point. <laughs> yeah, I know. I love when you said you watch it alone. But I, I mean, I respect it, man. I, I love watching reality shows as well. That's one thing that I did at home during COVID a lot because my mom loves reality shows. So yeah, it came up a lot. But uh, yeah, and so then you shot uh, years and years and years ago, you shot Sharpay's movie uh, and that was in Toronto. So I'm in Toronto. I want to know, do you remember anything about the city? Did you have any cool experience? Dude, I love Toronto. I I think it's such a great city. Jake and I went back there and we worked uh, for a couple weeks there um, doing just like promos and stuff like that. It was really cool. I, I love that city. I was there in the summer filming Sharpay's and then in the winter doing the thing with Jake. I liked the summer a lot better. Um, yeah. It's pretty, pretty cold. But uh, let's see. I remember – let's try to think. There's a really cool like underground mall, right? Do you know what I'm talking about? So we about? have a whole thing under the city called like the path and it connects Union Station, which is like our main thing in Toronto. It's, it's like a mall though, right? There's like some yeah. shops under there and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. That was really good. Okay, dude, there's this place called Summer's Ice Cream. It's okay. Re- really good. And so I would eat that ice cream all the time when I was filming Sharpay's. And then when we went back and did this promo, I said to Jake, I was like, dude, this place is so good. Like we got to get it. Yeah. And I think I, I couldn't, I think we called, we had the front desk of the hotel call and see if they were open. And it turns out that summer's ice cream is only open in the summer. But the owner was like, oh my God, like our family loves you guys. Like we'd love to help out. So they went and personally delivered us ice cream from summer's ice cream that is not open at the time. It won't be open now for you, but it is the best ice cream that I think I've ever had. And so there was shout out to Summer's Ice Cream. It was the sweetest thing ever that they brought us that. Dude, Maybe. that's quite a shout out to them. I'm going to tag them when I post this video and they're going to be very happy to hear from you. I hope so. they're still open. I really do because it was so good. And it, I ate so much of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I love that. Yeah. Um, okay, dude. So let's move on to what you're currently doing. So I, I know, you know, I saw you in Good Luck Charlie uh, and then, you know, Mighty Med and Lab Rats and whatnot. And then there was a few years where, you know, you're going to school and then you started with Jake, a podcast called Hit the Breaks. And now you've restarted it with the sit and chat. So yeah. tell me about the process of starting it and then, you know, stopping, I guess, during the writer's strike and how things are going now. Yeah. So, you know, we, we started that podcast uh, just kind of figuring it out and learning and had no idea what we were doing at all. And, you know, it is a, it's a process to do a podcast. It's a process for us to do a podcast because a lot of people will just like buy a mic and a camera and just be good with it. Jake and I both need a lot going on. It's got to look really good. It's got to sound good. And it's got to be like, it's got to feel like a legit podcast, you know? And so 
we went through the process and we just kind of had no idea what we were doing. Everything happened to strike. We just had some creative differences on the producing side of things. And so we just were like, all right, well, let's, let's try again. We kind of weren't going to do another one, but we saw like the reaction to people missing the podcast. And we were like, okay, I didn't think people really liked this thing, but sure, we'll, we'll keep going with it. And uh, so, yeah, so we were like, well, I guess we got to do this again because people really want to see us do it, you know? And uh, it was pretty cool. It was really cool to like have people care about, I don't know, like what you're talking about, you know, and it's the silliest stuff too. But so, yeah, we, uh, we started doing that and then we're, we're four or five episodes in on the new show, kind of a different format where, uh, I don't know if you've ever listened to smart list. It's like Jason Bateman's podcast. Yeah. I love that show, but we kind of like format it in the same way where they talk for like 10 minutes in the beginning, and then they do their interview and then they talk for a little bit at the end. And we've, we've found that that groove works well for us just because we like to be able to talk about our things and then also bring in the guests. Whereas before we were just, we just had the guests there already. Um, and it didn't, I, I, that's like how Joe Rogan does it, but Joe Rogan's very specific. Like, yeah, that's, that's a kind of a one of a kind podcast that works for him. So yeah, we tried to, change up the format, change up the look, change up all these things and get going again. And it's, it's really well suited to you and Jake as well, because when people tune in, yes, they care about your guest, but they also care about you, right? You guys are, you know, to a significant t- degree, you're the attraction, you're the thing that people want to watch. So yeah. having that 10 minutes before and after, I think is really key. It's a great format for you guys. So um, yeah, I, I listened to the one with Eric uh, yesterday. I know you guys even cut out the end cap because you liked him so much. So that, that was pretty sick. Well, because so we book it on studio time. We go to this place and we only have an hour of this studio time. And and it's like you can't go over because other people are coming in. So we have to be like super strict about the timing of it, which is hard to do when you're filming an hour podcast and you only have an hour to do it. It's like you kind of need time on both ends. Um, but yeah, Eric is just an easy person to talk to, um, especially as somebody who I see probably once a week. But it's it's simple. And it works. And I don't think that Jake knew his story as much as I did. So it was interesting for him to talk to him and yeah, and to kind of catch up and, and learn about each other. Um, but yeah, that, that was a problem we hadn't come across yet of like not having the time to do it. <laughs> I mean, that's a sign of a good conversation, right? Yeah. Well, Bradley, there's one last thing I wanted to talk to you about before we do a little surprise at the end. The last thing I wanted to ask is your cooking channel. I have loved it. Oh, I love you. food. I love cooking. I yeah. love healthy eating. And it's been really cool to watch you and Eric and even Mia get together to make stuff. Just tell me about the process, the experience, what you've loved about it. Dude, so, I mean, it sounds like you and I kind of share uh, the interest in healthy food. Is for, for me, I like, honestly, what happened was I just found myself like not really caring about my health, wasn't in the best like physical shape that I wanted to be. And that's something that I've always really cared about. So I was really upset that I wasn't in that position anymore. And so, you know, I got back to working out a good bit and then started eating clean again. And I mean, you know how it is, dude, when you're eating clean, it's like, it's for every gym, bro, it's, it's chicken and rice, chicken and rice. And it's eventually you're just like, I can't eat the same thing over and over again. So I kind of started to get creative on like, okay, how can I cook this piece of salmon and make it pretty and, and have it be good and, and like taste good and still be really healthy and clean. And so I kind of went down the rabbit hole of that and like doing that a bunch and we were in the middle of the strike. So I had a lot of time on my hands. And so I was just figuring things out and I started posting it on social media, like photos of it. And I'm surprised a lot of people were like, oh, I'd love to see how you make it. Or, oh, you should do a little cooking videos and stuff like that. And my social media manager was like, I really think you should like, just try it out. And I was like, okay, I'll give it a go. And so I did, and it worked out pretty well. Um, and people actually cared about it, but now it's funny for me. It's like, it's hard to do things. Cause I'm like, well, I don't want to make desserts. Cause that goes against why I was doing this. You know, it's like, yeah. or I don't want to make this thing. Cause it's like, even when we make like sandwiches or burgers, I'm like, well, I don't usually eat bread. So I'm like, it's kind of like a special treat for me if I'm eating bread, you know? And so it's like, it, it's tough to walk a fine line, but at the same time, I'm like, well, I, for the sake of the cooking videos, it's like, you kind of got to be, you got to do whatever, you know? 
Um, yeah. Yeah, you, you got to walk the line, right? You have to give the people what they want, but at the same time, try to make it as healthy as you can. I deal with the same thing, man. Like I, I've always loved healthy eating, healthy cooking. You know, recipes were a big part of my page earlier on. And then you realize that people don't have that much interest in healthy food. They kind of just want to see things that look good. So you, yeah. you, know, you have to walk the road. And for me, I've also come to realize too, is like, I feel like where I'm at with my health now is it's like, dude, if, if you make a burger and you eat the burger once a week, you're fine. You know, you're going to wake up and if you're doing your thing in the gym and you're eating clean 99% of the day, you're fine. It's like, it's not, I was so strict on it for so long that I'm like, I've come to the realization that I can give myself even the weekend if I wanted of like kind of eating crappy food. Now it's different. if like, if I booked something where I got to be in great shape and it's in three months, it's like, yeah, you can't really have those weekends because you got to just go full steam into it. But if I'm just living my life and I'm I'm going out with friends and having fun, it's like, you got to eat. You got to eat good food every once in a while. I love but it, I eat man. a lot of steak, dude. I eat, <laughs> I eat too much steak probably. I'm as close to a carnivore as you could probably get without being a carnivore. <laughs> You know what? Whatever works for you. That's what I've realized about nutrition, and particularly with my patients. I tell them what works for you, as long as you know you limit processed foods as much as possible. What works works. Yep, I totally agree. That's I it. totally agree. So it's different for everybody. Okay, Bradley. So we've reached the very last part of our interview. It's a really fun thing. I'm excited to do it. It's okay. a challenge for you. It's going to be the Bradley Stephen Perry quiz. I've got five questions. They're questions about you or things you've done. Okay. If you get them all right, the week I post this interview, I'll change my Instagram bio to whatever you want. Okay. If you don't get all of them. I'm going to make it hard. If you don't get all of them, you still don't lose. But instead, you choose who you want me to see interview next on this show. Okay. Deal? Okay. Right. So the first question, I'm going to start off easy. On Mighty Med, what did you call people without superpowers? Uh, normos, right? Yeah. Yeah. Very good. That's one. one down. This is a throwback now to Good Luck Charlie. You did an interview during season four where you were asked your favorite Muppet. Aww. What did you say? Oh, dude, come on. <laughs> Just tell me your favorite Muppet. Hopefully it hasn't changed. I don't think I remember. I mean, <laughs> did I say Kermit? So I'm going to give you the second guess. No, you didn't say Kermit. No. It would, it would probably have been like I was trying to be funny. I was trying to say somebody who's funny, right? Is that correct? Uh, you know what, man? I don't know the Muppets. But... I don't either. I, I must have just – I was lying because the damn Muppets were on the show. Okay. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to Google the Muppets right now. Um, okay. So here are the names of the Muppets. And then you are going to pick multiple choice, bro. And we're going to see if you can get this. Um, okay, Muppets names. Such a uh, okay, bro. This is what we got. We've got Kermit, Gonzo, Statler, Fozzie Bear, Annie, and Scooter. I don't think I would have said. Maybe. Gonzo is like the, I think he was the funny one, right? You got it, bro. You said Gonzo, so you count. We'll count that one. You got it. We're two for two right now. Okay. Um, okay. This one's pretty easy. Uh, when Gabe was trying to get a, a girl on Good Luck Charlie, instead of having Good Luck Charlie, he did a similar like name fortune show for Toby. his younger brother. Yeah, it was Good Fortune Toby. Nice. That, that one fortune. lives with me, bro. That one, <laughs> that everybody sends me that all the time. So nice. that one stuck with me. Beautiful. Okay. So fourth question. You're three for three right now. In one of the first movies you did, Magnificent Max. Oh my god! What was the name of your character? Oh, dude. Oh my god! I I have <laughs> genuinely I don't even remember working on that film. I worked on it with one of my best friends and my roommate, which is funny. Um, but you remember Evergreen Investments? <laughs> I don't, dude. The only thing I remember about Evergreen Investments was that I had to shoot off like a little toy rocket. That was it. <laughs> it was max. Oh, dude, I have no – I think I was like background on that damn thing. I don't even know if I was – I did I even have a name? 
<laughs> you did. Okay, I'll, I'll give you this one. It was Georgie Rosenthal. Does that I ring a bell? Do you remember? I never would have guessed that. I would have <laughs> never guessed that. You can uh, give me a okay. thousand attempts. <laughs> okay, so I had two more questions, so I'll ask them just because we'll, we'll go through the questions, see what you know. Um, so on, on Good Luck Charlie, what was PJ supposed to stand for, and what did Bob screw up the birth certificate so it was instead? It was supposed to be named after the grandfather or something like that, Patty Patty John, and it yeah. turned out to be Potty John. Nailed it. Good for you. That's a good one. Um, and then this is the last one. This one is a hard one unless you remember it. I was listening to it yesterday, which is why I know. So you did the inaugural episode of Jason Dolly's podcast called Mate. He asked you to sing a karaoke song, and you sang a country song. I did? Do you remember the name of the song? Okay. I remember doing this thing and I'm going to think about what country song I would have been listening to at the time. Let me think. Was it like a current country song or like a throwback country song? Um, you know what? I don't know the song myself. So let me check the date and I'll tell you so we can, uh, we can be fair. Um, the date on the song is 1983. Ah, that's what I'm thinking. Hmm. I'm going to go with 1983 and I say and it's a country song. Can I get one more hint? Sure. Um the artist's name is Alabama. Oh, Dixieland Delight. There we go. Yeah, so, Brad, to end us off, can we get like a few words of Dixieland Delight sang by you? Hey, that's like the like the Alabama like college like theme song. It's like spend my dollar, parked in a holler neath the mountain blue light, roll tide. It's such amazing. Like, it's just total white people singing it down in Alabama, dude. <laughs> I love it. Well, Bradley, Stephen Perry, the last thing for you to do now is who should I interview next and what is the question you want me to ask them? Hmm. Hmm. Why don't we see what Mr. Uh, Jake Short is up to? Um, he can come on here and talk about his version of the podcast and uh, what questions, what his favorite memory is uh, about me and like with me in our time. Beautiful. Together. Okay. Well, Bradley, Stephen Perry, thank you so much for joining us today. It was such a pleasure to chat with you, man. Uh, I had a great time and thanks for joining, dude. Yeah, absolutely, dude. This was a lot of fun.